Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. A group enjoys a night of drinking on a yacht when something hits the boat. At first, they ignore it, but the blows become stronger, damaging the boat's floor. A giant shark finally emerges from the center of the boat, throwing all the passengers into the sea. The group desperately tries to get back on the boat as the shark pursues them. Suddenly, a harpoon hits the shark. We meet Carter Blake, who successfully captures the shark, thus saving the group. Due to the incident, Dr. Susan is summoned by the directors of Chimera Pharmaceuticals. Her facility, Aquatica, has been conducting experiments on sharks to research a cure for Alzheimer's disease. However, corporate executive Russell Franklin believes the experiments have become too risky. To convince them to proceed, Susan promises to provide them with results that will make their stocks soar within 48 hours. Later, Russell joins Susan on the way to Aquatica. They soon arrive at the remote facility, where Susan introduces Russell to marine biologist Janice. Russell spots a man swimming in the water with a shark nearby. He draws everyone's attention to it, and they watch as the man escapes the shark and clings to it. Carter then removes the tag stuck in the shark's teeth. Russell praises Carter for how he escaped the shark. However, Carter is not pleased to have a businessman at his facility. Janice explains that everyone knows he's there to investigate them. She then shows Russell the three test sharks, which are much larger than the others. Soon, most of the crew boards a ship to leave the facility, leaving the weekend crew to work. Later, engineer Tom criticizes Carter for using two shots to take down the escaped shark when he could have done it with just one. Carter argues that Tom didn't lock the enclosure, so the shark escaped. Tom insists he locked the enclosure, but Carter isn't convinced. He then asks Tom the height of the fences, and Tom responds that they're about eight feet tall. Janice continues to show Russell around the facility, explaining how most of it is submerged. Sublevel 1 is the living quarters, 2 is the laboratory and workshops, and 3 is engineering, with a wet entry security lock tunnel. Meanwhile, Susan works in her office with Dr. Jim. He reassures her that Generation 2 will be ready soon, but they're not ready for the experiment. Susan emphasizes that they have no choice. In the airlock, Russell interviews Carter about what he does, but the man remains passive toward him. Frustrated with his intrusion, Carter insists that his work doesn't violate his parole. He has no intention of making a change like the doctors or interfering with his work. Somehow, this satisfies Russell. In the kitchen, Sherman prepares a meal while his parrot insults him. To appease the bird, he feeds it whipped cream. Later, tower operator Brenda calls Susan to the surface. When Susan arrives there, she is confused to find the area empty. Moments later, fireworks grab her attention, and the entire team throws a surprise birthday party for her. The crew enjoys a night of dancing and drinking. Carter and Susan talk privately, where Carter reminds her of the invitation to drink with him. However, Susan is too focused on her work to entertain his advances. Meanwhile, Jim and Janice explain how they used a hormonal enhancer to increase the brain anterior of the female shark to harvest more protein that theoretically could reactivate human brain cells. Later, Carter shares his theory that the test sharks attack in groups to target other potential predators. He believes that returning the shark that attacked the boat too early was a bad idea. Hearing this, Susan emphasizes that if they don't achieve results by tomorrow, everyone will lose their jobs. When she leaves, Tom joins Carter and assures him that they've raised the fences. The next day, a storm forms near Aquatica. Tom and Carter prepare the facility for the storm's arrival. Later, Carter is sent into the tunnel to retrieve a shark. Two test sharks attack the tunnel but retreat when he aims the gun. Russell is surprised that the sharks recognize the guns as a threat. Soon, their monitors fail as the sharks destroy all the cameras. Jim and Tom try to get Carter to retreat, but he doesn't hear their calls. Carter enters the enclosure and is attacked by a shark but manages to shoot a tranquilizing harpoon at it, rendering it unconscious. The shark is then transferred to the platform, which is hoisted up to the laboratory, along with Carter. The team examines the shark while monitoring its health. After confirming that the shark is asleep, Susan enters the platform and installs a device on its head. The shark suddenly jerks, startling her, but she proceeds nonetheless. Susan drills into the shark's head and extracts the protein complex. They then mix it with a cultured brain neuron from an Alzheimer's patient. To their joy, the protein complex successfully reactivates the neurons. 
Jim celebrates with a cigarette and approaches the sleeping shark. Suddenly, the shark turns towards him and bites his arm. Carter quickly climbs out of the platform as the shark thrashes. He grabs a shotgun from the shelves, but Susan ejects the shark back into the water before he can shoot. While Janice tends to Jim's injury, Brenda calls a helicopter to evacuate him to a hospital. The team does their best to keep him stable as the helicopter heads their way. The helicopter struggles to land due to the storm, so Carter goes ahead to assist. They quickly place Jim on a stretcher and connect him to be lifted into the helicopter. As the helicopter lifts the stretcher, the team rushes back into the facility. However, the helicopter's hoisting mechanism jams, causing Jim to fall back into the water. Suddenly, something pulls the stretcher still connected to the helicopter. The helicopter is dragged along, colliding with the facility and killing the pilots and Brenda in the resulting explosion. The team in the lab struggles to find a working surveillance camera to understand what happened. Instead, they see Jim's stretcher in a shark's mouth through the window. The shark hurls the stretcher against the window, creating cracks in the glass. The team runs before the window shatters completely, flooding the room with water. Carter becomes trapped in the water but manages to swim back to the surface. With his help, the team finally opens the jammed door and closes it as the water rushes in. Due to the explosions, Sherman grabs a drink in the kitchen and tries to contact someone but gets no response. With the staircase flooded and the elevator shut down, the team is trapped on sublevel 2. The facility continues to shake, and Sherman takes it as a sign that he should stop drinking. Carter devises a plan to pass through the lab and go to sublevel 3 to retrieve the submarine and reach the surface. Meanwhile, Sherman follows an echoing sound down the sublevel 1 hallway, only to be surprised by a wave of water. As the team makes its way through the lab, they hear something banging on the door. Soon, the door will be destroyed, so they hurriedly pass through it and reach the maintenance door in the hallway. Finally, they open the maintenance door just as the area fills with water. When they are safe, Russell confronts Carter, asking if he thinks a shark managed to get through the door. Carter believes that a Generation 2 female shark did it, given its size. Russell deduces that the sharks are specifically after them, so he demands an explanation from Susan. Susan reluctantly explains that the sharks' brains weren't large enough to extract complex enough protein, so they genetically modified them to increase their brain mass. This made the sharks smarter. She argues that their actions were necessary to cure degenerative brain diseases. However, the rest of the team is not convinced. Meanwhile, Sherman looks for an exit when he encounters a shark approaching him. Sherman desperately swims to escape and reaches the kitchen. The shark passes through the kitchen, leaving him safe for now. As they reach the submarine, Tom assures everyone that their fences will prevent the sharks from escaping the facility. However, when they finally reach the airlock, they find the submarine damaged. In the kitchen, Sherman grabs an axe to defend himself and climbs onto a shelf to get out of the water. When he reaches the top, he is surprised by his parrot, which lands on a pot in the water. Sherman tries to grab the parrot, but the shark emerges and devours the bird. Sherman clings to the shelf, but it tilts, he falls into the water, and to avoid being devoured, he enters the oven, closing it before the shark reaches him. On sublevel 3, the team tries to find another way to escape, and Janice curses Susan for putting them in this situation. With no options, Russell suggests they take a risk and swim out of the facility. In the kitchen, the shark accidentally turns on the oven, filling it with gas. Sherman uses the axe to break the top and get out. He opens the top door and jumps out just as the shark gets stuck in the oven. He then throws a lighter at the shark, causing the kitchen to explode. The team below feels the vibrations from the explosion as they prepare to dive into the water. Russell is optimistic about the plan, but Tom is still skeptical. Tom believes they can climb the maintenance ladder, but if the surface airlock was destroyed in the explosion, the pressure would stabilize, filling the entire facility with water. Susan argues that they can't risk destroying Aquatica, but Tom is unwilling to risk his life further for her research. Russell shouts for them to stop arguing, recounting how he and his team almost gave up after surviving an avalanche. He reveals that his team sacrificed two of them to escape the Alps. Now, he gives a speech to the team, asking them to stop fighting and instead work together to ensure everyone survives. While he is instructing what to do, a shark jumps out of the pool behind him and pulls him into the water. Unfortunately, the group can do nothing but watch the water turn red with blood. Terrified, Tom decides to wait for a rescue team. 
To help him focus, Carter asks what will happen if tons of water flood the facility. Tom calculates that the support beams will break first, followed by the walls. Carter then asks if he wants to stay and wait for that to happen, and Tom says no. The team finally agrees to take the risk and open the maintenance ladder door. As soon as they do, the pressure in the pool becomes unstable, and water fills the facility. They rush inside, but struggle to close the door. The women climb the ladder first, while the men try to close the door. After sealing it, the two catch up to their companions. However, the elevator on the surface is on fire, causing flaming debris to fall on them. With no other choice, the team continues, hoping to reach sublevel 1. When they hear banging from below, Carter realizes that another shark is trying to break through. He volunteers to open the door to sublevel 2 to introduce water there and gain some time. The shark opens the door, causing the water to rise rapidly. Carter manages to open the door with a lever, and the water pushes him out. He clings the ladder avoiding the shark. With the facility flooded, the support beams break, causing the facility to shake. The ladder detaches from the wall and breaks. Janice falls into the water while the others hold on. Carter tries to rescue her, but the shark reaches her first. Her death leaves Carter devastated. The survivors are trapped on the ladder, with the sublevel door right in front of them. Suddenly, something hits the sublevel one door, and to their surprise, it's Sherman. Sherman rescues the team, but the stairs to the surface are also flooded. Tom and Carter believe they can drain the staircase to the surface if they can activate the emergency generators. Carter and Tom return to the flooded lab while Susan and Sherman stay on sublevel 1. While waiting for the two, Susan wants to go to her room to retrieve the data logs. Sherman criticizes her for still thinking about research after so many of them have been killed, but Susan argues that their deaths would have been in vain if they didn't recover the data. Carter enters the lab while Tom stands at the entrance to keep watch. Carter struggles with wires and broken equipment and ends up facing Jim's corpse, startling him. Carter surfaces to breathe, and Tom emerges, having followed him. Alone in Janice's room, Sherman records a video as his last message in case he dies. Uncertain of what to leave for the world, he begins to reveal his omelet recipe. Finally, Carter and Tom reach the generators and activate them. However, the shark reaches Tom and grabs him. Carter swims away as the shark tears Tom in half, destroying the control panels in the process. Carter then swims to open the door, barely managing to get out before the shark reaches him. Meanwhile, Susan reaches her room and carefully makes her way to her locker. There, she retrieves her research data. Behind her, an impending shark fin approaches, but it's just the model shark in her room. She pushes it aside but finds another shark fin approaching. The shark approaches quickly, and Susan hurries to get out of the way. She climbs onto a shelf for protection, but drops her research data. She reaches for it, but the shark almost bites her hand. Thinking quickly, Susan breaks the cables from her room's power box. Then, while standing on top of her diving suit, she throws the cables into the shark's mouth, electrocuting it, and being in the water, the energy charge is higher in its body, leading it to death. However, Susan's data is also destroyed. After reuniting with Carter and Sherman, the trio heads to the decompression chamber. As their plan to drain the stairwell failed, they must swim to the surface. Carter prepares a fire extinguisher to lure the remaining shark away. To equalize the pressure in the chamber, Carter opens the valves, letting the water in. While they wait for the chamber to fill, the trio gathers in a circle, and Sherman leads a prayer. Finally, the chamber fills. Carter opens the shaft and allows the others to pass. He then releases the fire extinguisher to attract the shark as they swim to the surface. The shark spots the group and attacks the fire extinguisher, allowing the trio to reach the surface. However, as they do, the shark grabs Sherman. Susan and Carter swim away as the shark drags Sherman through the water. Sherman uses his crucifix to stab the shark in the eye, forcing it to release him. Carter then swims back to rescue him, and they reach solid ground. Susan tends to Sherman's wound before meeting up with Carter outside. Carter notices that the titanium fences sank along with the facility. He deduces that the sharks are pursuing them to force the facility to sink, thus sinking the fences and allowing the sharks to escape. Susan decides to kill the last shark to prevent it from escaping. Carter loads powder into the harpoon and tells Susan to connect the wire to a car battery, and as it hits the shark, they activate the battery and detonate the bomb. The shark collides with the fence to escape, while Carter prepares to shoot. 
He aims, but the shark doesn't resurface as it has created a hole in the fence and is tearing it to pieces. Susan decides to use herself as bait to lure the shark. She jumps into the water with a bloody hand, catching the shark's attention. When the shark lunges toward her, Susan tries to return to the surface, but the ladder breaks. Carter jumps, but it's too late. Susan is devoured by her creation. The shark then pursues Carter, but he avoids the attack and grabs onto the shark's fin. The shark thrashes, trying to get rid of him. Sherman regains consciousness and takes Carter's harpoon, understanding his plan. He shoots the shark in the fin, but also hits Carter's leg. Nevertheless, Carter yells for Sherman to detonate the bomb. Sherman hesitates, knowing it would also kill Carter. The shark tries to escape by lunging against the fence. Carter clings to the fence in time, and the shark exits the enclosed area, and just in time, Sherman detonates the bomb. Sherman smiles as he sees that Carter survived, while the shark is dead. Shortly after, the two reunite, and the weekend crew arrives. We conclude here with the two exhausted and determined to quit that job.